Okay, so if you were keeping up with my Vlogmas, you may have already noticed this, but I got through 12 days, which I am proud of, a little 12 days of Christmas moment, um, and it encapsulated all of the fun things we were doing this month, so I'm glad that I got those first 12 days out. Um, but between work being crazy, given that I only have two weeks left, and the fact that we are closing on our house and moving in next week and it's like actual holidays things are just like nuts around here um so obviously there will be no more vlogmas videos from me but i will go back to uploading normally so <clears throat> this video is going to be my top 22 books for the year of 2022 at least so far um I'm going to turn you back to past Alex to take you through that. Um, but welcome to this video. It is a Sunday and we are doing family stuff today. So I don't have time to film a vlog. Um, so I saw Destiny Sidwell post a video yesterday of her like top 22 books of 2022. And I thought that that would be fun. Um, so I went through all of my like top rated books on Storygraph, which if you don't know, it's just like a small business version of Goodreads that I personally like how it works better. Um, yeah, I thought we would just go through my top 22 books for 2022 um, in no particular order. Here they are. So the first one is gonna be Good Girl Complex by Elle Kennedy. Um, it's about a people pleaser who already has a whole like internet business but goes to college anyways um, basically to make her mom happy. I loved this book. I know that there are very like mixed opinions on it but I did rate it four and a half stars um, and it is on this like top 22 list for me. Next up is One Italian Summer by Rebecca Searle and this is about a girl who was supposed to be taking a trip um, with her mom to Italy and then her mom dies and she decides to go on the trip anyways and she gets to like meet the young version of her mom and just see like what she was like in her glory day and I thought that that was a really good book. Um, I honestly don't remember reading it like that vividly, but the fact that I could just tell you the plot um, without reading the plot at all, even though I read this book in January, I think is uh, pretty impressive for me. The next book is The Midnight Library by Matt Haig. These are the only two hardcovers on here, so that's how you know they're good, because I accept that they're reading the hardcover version of them. But The Midnight Library is about somebody who is trying to unalive themselves um, and they're taken into this world where they can see how any of the decisions that they've made would affect their life um, and they ultimately decide in the end whether they want to live or die based on what they've seen. I thought that it was a really cool concept um, and I did rate that book five stars. Also one Italian summer I gave four and a half stars. I'm gonna save this for last. The next two books I'm going to go with are It Ends With Us and It Starts With Us. Um, I, I had a year this year of just like catching up on all the popular books basically, so if you see literally all of the popular books in here, that's why, but It Ends With Us and It Starts With Us, I rated both of these books five stars. Um, I just love co-host writing and I think that these stories were like heartbreaking and really representative of how um people in like abusive relationships can feel um so i think that she did a great job with these books i know that some people do not like them but i am a fan personally i'm gonna save that one towards the end um, the next book on here is the soulmate equation um which is so about somebody like super into data and statistics and they go through this process um, basically where you submit your like DNA and they can find who your like soulmate is based on your DNA levels um, and she ends up like matching with the like doctor in charge of the whole thing 
but this book I thought was amazing. I don't remember if I rated this four and a half or five stars. I want to say it was five, but I'm not positive about that. Um, there's also a lot of Christina Lauren on this list. So next one is my favorite half night stand, which I think that this is the most underrated Christina Lauren book ever. Um, I think that this was incredible. I rated it five stars. I bought it for one of my friends for their birthday so they could read it too. I just thought it was great. Um, Millie and Reed are one of my favorite book couples ever so I would highly recommend my favorite half night stand if you haven't read it because I don't think that that's a Christina Lauren book that gets recommended very often. The next one is Love in Other Words. You can't read this book and I'll leave it off your list. I feel like it's impossible. It's the cutest childhood friends to lovers like story um, and I don't know I thought it was really good I did rate it four and a half stars and not five which I feel like the internet's gonna come for me for but um I personally really liked it and would definitely like read it again I know a lot of people have that book as like their comfort read and I totally get it next up is book lovers by Emily Henry I know a lot of people thought this was really boring um I liked it I like books that are set in the literary world. I think it's really good. Um, this is about a girl who goes on this trip with her sister um, to a town from their favorite novel and they are very disappointed uh, but it's like reading a Hallmark movie and I thought that it was cute so I did rate that one five stars. Next is Meet Me in the Margins by Melissa Ferguson. This is another book that immediately upon finishing it I went on Amazon and I ordered it for one of my friends because I wanted them to read it too um, but this book is about somebody who works at a like publishing agency and they're working on their own book um, and they have this little like secret area of the office that they leave their manuscript in and somebody else finds it and starts editing it for them and they like sort of fall in love through the pages which is really cute and the next book on here is Talk Bookish to Me. As you can tell, there is a pattern here. Um, I like these books that are like set in the publishing world. Um, but this book is about a girl um, whose like ex-boyfriend randomly shows up. Um, she's like helping with a wedding and her ex-boyfriend is a part of it too. And she needs to finish her book that is on this deadline and her ex-boyfriend is like one of the only motivations she has to write. Um, so they end up in some sticky situations. It's definitely like a forced proximity, like enemies to lovers, but also second chance romance. Um, I rated both of those books five stars by the way. The next books on here are the OG trilogy of the Selection series. So it's the Selection, the Elite, and the One. Um, I rated the Selection four and a half stars, but the other two I rated five. I loved these books. I did also read The Air and the Crown. I just rated them a little bit lower than these ones. Um, I was obsessed with reading about America and obviously America and uh, Max and were like the cutest couple and I loved reading them about them even more um, in the like sequel series but if you don't know what the selection is it's about this society it's a dystopian society um, and they live in a caste system um, based on their employment and that like decides basically their class um, and Every once in a while, the monarchy goes through the selection to pick a new significant other for the prince. Um, so, or I guess, and the princess in the later books. But this is Prince Maxon going through his selection to find somebody he loves. Um, and it's about this girl, America, who's a cast of five, so she's pretty low. And... I love these books. I thought they were amazing. They are YA, um, so they're very, very easy to read, and I enjoyed them a lot. Next, we're going to my girl, Allie Hazelwood. I 
she's gonna be an automatic buy author for me um, forever. I know that a lot of people think that her books are like similar to each other, but I don't care. Uh, so first, there's the Love Hypothesis, which is about a PhD candidate who ends up like kissing a professor just because she had lied about being on a date, um, and then a lot ensues after that. But the Love Hypothesis was really good. I did rate this five stars. Um, I also rated Love on the Brain five stars. I think I actually liked Love on the Brain better, um, which I don't think a lot of people agree with, but this is about a woman who starts working on this big project with NASA, um, and her, like, co- I don't- I don't know what they're called. Her, like, co-lead, um, she's a neuroscientist, and he's an engineer, um, so the other person who's in charge of the project is somebody that she, like, hated in grad school, um, and- there's a lot of like weird things that happen, but I did really enjoy this book. Moving on to The Roughest Draft by Emily Werberly and Austin Siegmund Broca. Um, I saw this book like randomly on sale for $5 or something at the Amazon Prime store, so I grabbed it and immediately fell in love. Um, it's about a, well, they're not a couple, but it's about two authors that need to write one more book together um and they sort of hate each other um and they have to like go live in this house together to finish their book so very forced proximity um but i loved preface draft next on here is dial a for aunties this was one i read more recently kept me laughing the entire book which i love um it's about just a girl who is or it's about this family that works in the wedding industry, but the main girl, like, is supposed to go on a date, and the guy ends up being, like, super creepy, and she thinks she kills him, and the whole family, like, rallies around her um, to make sure she doesn't get in trouble, basically. But it's wild. <laughs> it's a fun book. Uh, I really enjoyed it, and I did read um, Four Aunties and a Wedding as well, and that one was pretty good, but I did not rate it as highly as this one. Next one on here is The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. I think this was actually the first book that I finished this year. Um, I did rate it for one and a half stars. It's about Evelyn Hugo um, and just like her life and it's it's not written in interview style but you feel like you're reading it in interview style. Um, I really enjoyed it. It was interesting to me. Um, I know I just keep I keep saying the same things but it was a good book. Next one is The Dead Romantics by Ashley Poston. Um, I had this book sitting on my shelf for so long before I finally picked it up and I ended up absolutely loving it. It's about this girl who's sort of a medium and she can help like people pass to the other side um, and she meets this guy and well she doesn't, she's somebody that she like previously knew and didn't really like but she's like helping him pass on. Um, and then, then they fall in love, which sounds weird, but I don't know. I also read Light Little by Colin Hoover this year, and I thought that that was a really weirdly written version of this, and I thought that this was really good, so I'm, I'm not really sure. Now, I did save my top two books for the year for last, um, and yes, these two are in order. So number two for the year for me is The Unhoneymooners by Christina Lauren. I think this is one of the funniest books I've ever read. This is the book that made me fall in love with Christina Lauren's writing. Um, this is the book that made Christina Lauren an automatic buy for me, and I loved it. So this is about a girl. There was a wedding, and the sister, uh, the couple ends up getting sick, so the sister and the best man go on the honeymoon together, um, and they kind of hate each other, but it's enemies to lovers. It's funny. It's fun. Um, I think I read it in like, I don't know, not one sitting, but definitely like two sittings. And then for my final book of the year, this is the only book that I read in one sitting this year. I was hooked from page one to the last page, and that is Verity by Colleen Hoover. 
Um, I also went and sat in Barnes and read the extended chapter of the hardcover version because I needed to know. Um, and I am team manuscript in case you're wondering, but I loved Verity. Um, Verity is about a an author who ends up ghostwriting for one of the biggest authors um, to help finish her book because the author was in a car accident and can no longer write. Um, so this girl comes in to finish the book and some very, very strange things start happening and she discovers some weird secrets about the family. Um, I loved this. I want everybody to read it. If you haven't read Verity, like order yourself a copy right the second and pick it up. It is incredible. Um, but that is my top 22 books for 2022. I know that there is still a little bit of time. Um, it is only the 11th so maybe I'll find a new favorite book in the next two weeks but I doubt it. Um, I think that Verity is going to take the cake for me for a while. So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it.